this is what we are making today. First, we're gonna get our colored paper. So I've got navy blue, light blue, this like really bright red color, yellow, it's almost like a burgundy color, bright pink, green, and orange. So we don't have to use all these colors, I just wanted to get all the colors I have for an option. And if we look at, these are my flower templates here. So we've got, can you see, hopefully you can see, sorry, my box is casting shadows. Um, so I've got half a flower here, that's a big one. So if you look at the size of that compared to the size of my paper, I'm gonna cut a square about that size. So I like this um, dark blue. So we need about, we need a square about that size. So I'll show you on a piece of paper how big that is. I didn't bring a ruler, but if you see this whole big piece of paper compared to the size of the square that I cut. So it's just like a little corner of that paper that's about the size that we're working with. You can make even larger. If you wanna make a huge flower, you can do that. You don't have to do the same size as me. You can do a long skinny one if you wanted. So we want to make them nice and contrasting colors. So we don't wanna do one, one blue flower and then do another blue flower over top of it because we won't be able to see it. So if you have a look at mine, I've layered them. So I've started with a bright blue, then yellow, in pink, burgundy. So we just kind of want to layer the colors so they pop and we want to use contrasting colors. So I've done a dark blue, maybe I'll do a yellow, yellow one next. So the next square you want to cut, you want to make it slightly smaller. We don't want to do the same size because it will totally overlap. So make it slightly smaller. And we're just gonna get all of our squares ready before we start cutting and drawing our flower shapes. We'll get our squares sorted. Okay, so you can see that square fits in nicely with that. So that's not too big, not too small. And I can easily put probably two more squares inside the yellow one, smaller and smaller. So let's think about what color we want. Maybe a bright pink one. I think that would look really nice. So I'm gonna cut an even smaller square of my bright pink. So that's, don't worry about straight lines because when we fold the paper and we draw our flower, it'll be a complete perfect um, mirror image. So right now, the, the lines don't have to be perfectly straight. And I've got maybe one more. I might do maybe this dark, maybe a blue, a bright blue color. So I've got this really bright blue. Yeah, I kind of like that. I think that looks good. Okay, so that's sort of my first flower that I'm gonna do, the big top one, and then I'll work on my other smaller flowers. But while you guys are cutting away, I wanna talk to you a little bit about what this, this art is. So Polish folk art comes from the country Poland. So that's in sort of Eastern Europe, and they have a word for it, it's called I don't know if I can pronounce it. It's called Vici Nonki, which is the Polish word for paper cut design. So this this art form, this art form has 
it has a long history. It's um, going back about 150 years since um, this type of art has been creative, created in Poland. And if you notice, it's, it's actually symmetrical. So they fold the paper in half and then draw their designs. And when they open it, it's a mirror image. So this is called um, bilateral, bilateral symmetry or a mirror image. So with symmetry in art and design, it, it creates balance, so it's perfectly balanced. Everything's in harmor, harmony and order, and it's also aesthetically pleasing. So it's very pleasing to the eye to look at. That's totally balanced. And you, if you go out in nature, you'll actually see a lot of different things that are totally sym symmetrical. So you can go on uh, a nature treasure hunt and go and spot some leaves. Leaves are, are symmetry. Um, butterflies, dragonflies, beetles, ladybirds, all of these things naturally occur in nature that are sym symmetrical. Uh, we also have other things called um, radial symmetry. So radial symmetry is maybe a daisy or other flowers and snowflakes. Snowflakes are per perfectly round and they're identical at all angles. So totally radial symmetry. So that's what we're going to try and achieve today. So once we have our squares, we wanna start drawing our flower template. So what you need to do first is fold your square in half. Your first square. Now you probably won't be able to see my flower, the shape that I draw, because it's a dark blue paper, but you can see some of my templates here. That you can do a spiky flower, a long curved flower. Just imagine some flower petals. It's like a scalloped line across the top, okay? So I am gonna draw this one rather big. because This is my first flower and I wanna use as much space as I can on this big petal, okay? So once you have that flower, then you can cut that one out and keep Keep the paper folded when you're cutting, but don't cut off the folded line. Otherwise, when you open it, you're gonna have two pieces rather than one piece stuck together. If you don't cut perfectly over top of your pencil line, that's okay. What we'll do, if you see any pencil lines, we will just glue that side down. So if you see some shiny pencil lines that you didn't trim off, we'll just glue that side down so then the side without the pencil will be facing up on our artwork. So don't stress about that, that's okay. So we've got a folded piece of paper and I've drawn half a flower shape. And when I open it, it's perfectly mirror image on both sides. Okay, so that's what you will need to do is fold your paper first. Okay, so I've got flower number one. Now I've got three more squares to do. So my next square I'm gonna do is the yellow. So I'm gonna fold my paper in half again And you can draw the same flower shape again if you like because it's gonna be smaller, so you'll still see it. Or you can draw a different flower shape. So you might be able to see my drawing this time because it is on yellow paper. So I'm gonna do a little different flower shape this time. if you can see the flower shape that I've drawn. Like that. So I'm gonna cut that out now. And again, my paper is folded. So if I unfold the paper, you'll see that I've only drawn half the flower because when we cut it out, it's gonna be identical on the other side. So that's my second flower 
And I'm gonna open this up now. Okay, now we'll put it all with the first flower. Let's have a look. There we are, so it's starting to come together. That's the way, Ethan, yep. So flip it over so you don't see your pencil line. Perfect, that's the way. So you can see my flower, I've got my dark blue and then my yellow flower in a different shape. And I've got two more squares here. So the next square I'm gonna do is my pink flower. And again, I'm gonna fold my paper in half. So it's gonna get tricky. The smaller the square that you do, you might wanna do a simpler flower design because it's gonna get really tricky to cut the, the folded, the small paper. So maybe make your flower a little bit more simpler when you do smaller flowers. Okay, so I've just done a simple, sort of like a zigzag line on the top, so it'll look like a tulip when I open it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one now. All right, so let's open this pink flower. There we are, and I'm gonna pop that on my yellow. So it's starting to look really cool, nice and bright and colorful. And I've got my very last square, this little blue one. So my last square here, I'm gonna open it up. Make sure my pencil lines aren't showing. And pop that down. Okay, so there's my first flower. I've done flower number one. And I'm gonna move on to, I might do my stem next. So here, I've actually, I could have made my stem a bit longer because I've actually crowded these flowers in a little bit. So um, what I might do is make a longer stem plus the, I've got all this negative space up here. So I made a bit of a mistake with this one. Um, I'm gonna turn it sideways, you can see there's a lot of negative space up at the top. It still looks really beautiful, but I think with a longer flower stem, I would have utilized this space a lot better. So I'm gonna do it this time. I'm gonna make my flower stem a lot bigger. So for this, I'm just gonna use a classic green color. You don't have to do a green flower stem. If you really like the color pink, you can do a pink flower stem, but I'm gonna do a green one. So I'm gonna measure this paper so if I did a flower stem about the length of um, this, one of the sides of the paper, that seems like it's a good length. And then it gives me room for my flower, my top flower, and then I'm not so crowded with the other ones. So I'm going to cut a thin strip off of my green. Okay. So this is giving me, yeah, about that height. And then that one will sit on top like that. And then I'll have room for one, two, three, four more there. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'll move my, my black paper out of the way. I'm gonna fold my green paper in half. And you wanna make like a, a fairly skinny stem, not too, not too fat. You wanna think about the ratio of a flower versus its stem. It's quite a thin stem with a big, beautiful flower. So we could add some leaves to it as well. So I might do a couple leaf shapes up and I'm gonna make four more flowers. So I'm gonna draw two leaves because when we cut it, It'll open it up and you'll have one leaf on each side. So one, two, three, four. So we'll just draw two leaves. Okay, so that is my flower stem. And I'm going to cut this out. When you do your flower stem, when you open it up, if you think it's too wide, or too chubby looking, you just fold it back in half and trim some of the excess off. It's an easy fix. Okay, so I've got my, I'm gonna open it up, see what it looks like. It's not 
too not too thick so I'm happy with that and then the flower will sit on top and then I've got room lots of room for four more flowers underneath it so I've got my first flower and my flower stem now I'm going to do my other smaller flowers so I'm gonna try and make them different shapes so you can have a look at um, this one is quite detailed in petals these ones are quite detailed and then these ones at the bottom have more of a bell or simple shape so I'll try to try to do that with the other one so I've done like a detailed one here but maybe I might op I might make them opposite so um, then ones below it I might make simple shapes and then the ones below that I'll do some more detailed shapes just to change it up a little bit and I, I don't want to use, you can use the same colors as your first flower if you want, if you like those color combinations. But I'm going for mine, I'm going to change them up a little bit and um, change the background flower. So I'll get my squares ready again. I think I'll do maybe some bright blue. Now with these ones, since we're making, actually I need to, might make it a little bit bigger than that. Since we're making two of the same flower, you're going to need two squares that are the same shape, the same size squares. So the easiest way to do that is to cut off a rectangle and then trim one square. Put that square over top of your next, or the excess of that rectangle, and then trim off the excess of that. It's a really rough way of measuring without a ruler, but it does the trick. So because we want a mirror image of these two, I'm just gonna go ahead and fold both of these papers in half. So they're just folded on the inside of each other. And then I'm gonna draw my flower shape here. Okay. So I've got two pieces, two squares inside here. So then when I open the flower, I'll have two identical flowers. So if you if you did that if you drew one flower and then you tried to draw the same flower again, it would be slightly different. It wouldn't be totally exact. So that's why we're going to tuck both papers in together and cut this out at the same time. When I do a painting, sometimes I'll do the same painting over and over and over again, but every single time, I do the painting, it's gonna be slightly different. The colors that I mix will be slightly different. The lines that I paint are gonna be slightly different. So this is the only surefire way to ensure that these flowers are totally symmetrical. Okay, so this is my flower shape for the next one. So I've got one flower, two flowers and they're totally identical. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'll turn them around for you because they're the other way around. I think orange and light blue go really well together. Or maybe dark blue then orange. I think that's what I'll do. Dark blue on top. So just a slightly smaller square again, or two, two of the same size squares rather. So I'll cut that in half and then cut that in half again. And they're roughly the same size. Fold the two of them over together in half. And then do another flower shape. And cut these out. So I've got two more pieces. Oh yeah, I like that. Dark blue against the light blue looks nice. I'm happy with that. And then maybe I'll add some orange now. 
Orange and blue are the opposite on the color wheel, so they're perfectly contrasting. So they look very pleasing to the eye. They're complete opposites. So again, we're gonna cut a rectangle out of your paper and then cut the excess off. So overlay your square. So we have a rough, rough idea of the same size square. And then I'll fold these in half together. I'm getting smaller and smaller now, so. Yeah. So I've got two flowers here as well. So I've got three total. So I've got one at the top and then I've got my flower stem. And then these ones will hang off your flower stem like that. And then we'll make two more down below. If you don't want to make any more, that's fine. You can just leave it like this or you can, you can layer it this way or this way. And they have leaves at the top or leaves at the bottom. So if you just wanna make three flowers, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep making two more flowers and then I'll glue everything together. So I'll have a think about my colors. Maybe I'll do um, a bright pink flower for the bottom ones, the background, because I've got lots of blue. So I need like a really bright contrasting color. So I'm gonna make big squares trim off a rectangle off the bottom here okay so here's my pink I try to make like a tulip style so these are my two identical pink flowers um, what goes good with pink maybe I might do some of that burgundy color and then some yellow to make it pop I didn't use red today more part more partial to the pink I think and I think some yellow over top of this will make really make it pop so I'm gonna do one more color and I'll do yellow and then I'll start gluing them together so I've made it long long and short Okay, so there are my cut paper flowers. Now, I'm using a glue stick, but if you've just got white glue, that's okay, either or. If you're using a glue stick, best practice is not to glue your item over top of your black paper. It will dry clear, but you will see some shiny glue anywhere that leaks out or if you glue on top of here and some of it gets on your paper it'll look shiny on your art on your paper after so it's always best practice to not glue on the paper you want to it to be glued on and use a different area so if you've got a mat or um the, the white glue all wipes clean so you can do it on your counter if um, mom and dad don't mind it'll wipe clean with soapy water um, but I like to go to the dollar store and get um, sort of cheap cutting boards. And these are what I use for my art. Um, I think I paid $3 for a pack of five or something. So it's just a cheaper cutting board. Of course, I forgot to bring those upstairs with me today. So I'm just going to use uh, the back of my um, spare paper here and I will glue it. So remember when we're gluing we want to glue the side that has the pencil lines. So when we flip the pencil lines over we won't see it. So I'm going to glue my stem first and then all my flowers over top of that.
So right down to the bottom and sort of center it in the middle of your page. So bottom of the page, but middle of it. And I'm doing portrait or vertical because I've made my stem very long. Any little bits of glue, you can just use your fingernail to flick it away so we won't see that shiny glue on our paper. My pencil line side. And then the next one, I've got this pink. So keep on gluing your flower uh, layer by layer. And this is what you'll come up with at the end. So please send me your creations if you like to nurturethenack at gmail.com. I would love to see what you've created. Thanks for joining.